They say it was like this. There lived a girl whose parents were gone. She lived with her grandmother and grandfather. Then one day her girlfriends invited her to come with them to the tundra to gather edible roots. The girl asked her grandmother. The grandmother let her go. The girls went after the roots in the faraway tundra. Many tasty plants and roots grew in the tundra. They started to pull out plants and dig up roots with hand hoes. And they did not notice that a dense fog was rolling onto them. The girls started to call to each other. They all gathered together but could not account for one, the one that they took with them. The girls became frightened. Surely their parents would scold them because they did not take proper care. They began to loudly call for the girl to get her to answer, but she never did. They figured that she had left already. They stopped searching for her and started for home. They came to the village, went to the lavu of the old ones and asked if she was home. The old ones answered that their granddaughter had not returned. At the time, the girl looked and looked for her friends, but she did not find them. She got completely lost in the fog. The girl cried, called them. Nobody responded. Suddenly, she saw big openings in the earth. She went into one, sat on the ground and cried and cried and fell asleep. She slept soundly, then suddenly someone was waking her. The girl awakened and saw a woman unknown to her. There were no such women in the village. The woman asked the girl, What are you doing here? The girl answered, We were collecting edible roots, then a dense fog covered us and I got lost. My girlfriends left me and no doubt went home. I walked and walked, could not find the way home and got altogether lost. I stopped, wanted to rest and I fell asleep. The woman said, Come with me in this opening. They entered. How amazing! The woman's Semlianka, a semi subterranean wooden dwelling made of driftwood, whale bones, turf, and stone, was large and airy, and in it were all sorts of things to eat. The woman began to feed the girl with the very best of foods whale fat and wild deer meat. The girl ate to her heart's content. The woman said to her, Live here for a while. Every day I will go away, but you wait for me. If you want to eat, eat anything that's here. Don't wait for me. So the girl began to live in the Semlianka. She would wake up in the morning and the woman would not be there. Every day the woman would go after food and only when night came would she return. She always brought back food, either whale fat or deer meat, and so they lived. Throughout this time, the grandfather with his neighbors looked for the girl everywhere but could not find her. Then he lost hope altogether and stopped looking for her. Then one day the woman asked the girl, Don't you miss your old ones? The girl answered, Yes. I miss them, but how will I get home? I don't know where my home is. I don't know what my grandparents are doing, the woman said. I will soon go to sleep and will not awaken for a long time. Very likely you will be even more homesick and your grandparents 
have cried out their eyes for you and have lost sleep over you. Every night they lie forehead to forehead, but they cannot fall asleep. The girl asked, Will you take me to them? The woman answered, First, I will teach you something magical. If you learn how to do it, nobody will defeat you in the festival competition. Festival competitions happened in the summer or fall for days after a successful hunt for seals and whales. You only have to do all that I will show to you. The woman took a drum, struck it, and began to sing. And she sang so well that the girl remembered every sound, every motion. The woman stopped singing and asked, Well, did you learn it? The girl replied, Yes, I did. The woman said, when you get home in the festival competition, do everything that I taught you. Well, now's the time. Put on your clothes. I'll go with you. The girl put on her outdoor clothes. They went out and outside the fall had begun. They walked and walked. They walked for a long time. Night had overtaken them on the way, so they reached the level of the old ones at night, the woman said. Now you will go by yourself. I have to go back. The woman turned around and started for home. The girl followed her with her eyes, and what do you know? On the path on which they came, a brown bear was running away. She then knew that she had been living with a brown bear. The girl went to her lava and looked inside. She saw her grandpa and grandma sleeping forehead to forehead. The girl knocked at the door and called out to them. The old ones awakened and said, That's the voice of her granddaughter, the girl told them. Yes, I have returned. Open up quickly. Her granddaughter has come back. The old ones opened the door. The girl entered and saw that the eyes of her grandparents were red from crying and sleepless nights. They fed their granddaughter and put her to sleep. In the morning, her girlfriends came and asked her how she got lost, where she had been, from where she had returned. The girl told no one that she had lived with a woman who turned out to be a brown bear. Out of joy, the old man arranged for a festival. The guests ate and began to narrate stories. They ate again and began to compete in shamanism and singing. Some crushed their beads, put them on the drum and tapped it with drumsticks. And behold, the beads were again whole. There were also shamans who turned a walrus tusk inside out by shaking it. The granddaughter spoke to her granny. I too would like to compete in singing. The old man heard this and he asked his wife, what does granddaughter want to do? Granny replied, she also wants to compete in singing. The grandfather said, if she wants to, let her compete. Some of the older people who came as guests began to whisper among themselves, look at her, a bad manner, the little girl wants to compete with real shamans. The girl went to the middle of the lava, took the drum and started singing. she sing, a distant roar was heard outside. The roar came closer and closer, soon the waves started splashing at the entrance and water poured into the entryway. At that point the girl started drumming faster. The waves receded and less in a minute 
miracle left many water plants in the entryway. The girl took a pan, gathered the water plants in it, and started to feed the guests. The guests were amazed. Then the girl asked for a small hoe, went to the entryway, struck the lower part of the earthen wall with the hoe, and as in a miracle, suddenly, from who knows where, there appeared various edible roots. Again, the girl took a pan, gathered the roots, and fed the guests. She fed them, took the drumstick and pierced the wall of the lava. From the opening in the tent, fresh, transparent water poured. The girl filled the bucket with the miraculous water and offered it to the guests. The guests drank it and were even more amazed. They had never seen such miracles before. From that time on, Ola recognized her great artistry, and there was not a competition in singing, dancing, or shamanizing that could take place without the little wizard. That is all.